I'm so happy to have you guys back today for another Lunch and Learn. So today we're going to be studying the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. This is part two. We're going to be reading from verse seven. So before we start, let's take a moment to pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask, Lord God, that you open the ears of our hearts and our minds, O oh God, to receive your word and that your word will be planted deep within our heart to bring forth fruit unto salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Thought in part one. Ezekiel is being taken on a little tour of um, different aspects surrounding the temple. So first he sees water trickling out of the temple and as he's brought around the side of the temple, this water that was trickling out has now become a river. So now in part two, we see that he is now back on the bank of the river because in the second part of verse six, it says, then he led me back to the bank of the river. So now we're in verse seven. It says, when I arrived there, so when I arrived on the bank of the river, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the Eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. Now we could easily study the word Araba to know what that means, but we're not gonna be doing that in this video. I do, however, encourage you to study, do word studies like that and topical studies to understand even deeper what the scripture means. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salty water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. So between verse 6b all the way down to 9. So we see that this is a river of fresh water. The river is flowing out of the temple and it is flowing into an area that will bring it into the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea obviously is dead as the word depicts. There's no living animals, it's very salty, and things are not able to survive there. However, when this fresh water flows into it, we see that all of a sudden things come to life. Things that were dead are now alive, and anything that is in that fresh water lives. This river that is characteristic of being life-giving. In the New Testament, what did Jesus say? That rivers of living water would flow from us, out of our bellies would flow, flow rivers of living water. Sorry, that's a mouthful. So we see that this living water is being spoken of again. And everything that comes into contact with this living water is made alive. And wherever the river flows, that is where this river is able to minister to. So if we liken this river to the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord within us gives us rivers of living water. And as the Spirit of the Lord moves and flows through our cities, through our churches, uh, through our countries, people are affected by the Spirit of the Lord. They are made to live again. Anything that was dead in their life is made to live, whether their spirit was dead, whether they were dead to salvation, um, things are made to live. So we see the importance of this river and of where this river is flowing to. We see that the, the river went directly to the Dead Sea, which is indicative of when Jesus said that he came for the sick. He didn't come for those who did not need a doctor. So we don't see the river going into other fresh water where things are already thriving. We see this river going directly where it is most needed, which is in the Dead Sea. Amen. So we're going to stop there for today. Um, and I want you guys to really ponder what this scripture means in your life and how the Lord uses his word and in this specific situation, his river of living water to make things to live. I want you to think about areas of your life that may seem dry or dead and that you want the Lord to revive them. Um, whether it is in your communities, in your homes, in your family, in your workplace, in your personal walk with God, whatever you feel is dry and dead and needs to be made alive, that you would ask the Lord for his rivers of living water to flow into that area. It says that we are like the trees planted by the riverside that flourish and whose leaves are green and never fade. That the Lord would do that for us, that we would be those trees planted on the banks of the river that are thriving and enjoying the benefit of those living waters. Amen. I pray that this word has been a great encouragement to you. If you do like this content, please give it a thumbs up. 
I pray that you would consider subscribing and do uh, share the video with those that you think that it would minister to. Remember, no matter what, you are too blessed to be stressed. Take care and bye.